Um, my name is Mr. Blakesley, and uh, so I have met a couple of you guys before, um, whether on a summer trip or in a previous class or um, outdoors club or things. Um, I teach science, and I love science. And when I read this book, uh, so many things stood out to me. Uh, we were uh, in Costa Rica on a trip, uh, and while I was reading it, I was just making tons of notes with like a billion ideas. Uh, it just really awakened a lot of cool thoughts uh, in my head. I teach physics and I teach um, uh, anatomy and physiology. And so uh, the talk that uh, we're gonna do tonight or today is a little bit about both of those. Um, if you remember from the book, uh, what's his face? I think it's Tiger um, was Rowan's friend who um, in an act of rebellion would throw himself off the top of buildings, right? And I thought about that. Uh, there's definitely a ton of physics involved, so we'll talk about that. And then also uh, just the feeling of falling um, and what it is that, uh, that that does to us, all right? So this is our, our model tiger here. Uh, it's just a, a clay person. Um, so we actually used these. Um, he's, he's serving double time. We did a practice dissection and anatomy uh, on Thursday last week. And so he's been cut up and put back together, which is similar to Tiger in the book, right? So uh, we're going to use him uh, to demonstrate falling. We'll see how he does. And let's see. So uh, just to reiterate, if you haven't, if you don't recall this part from the book, right, it's impossible for people to die a natural death, right? And, uh, and as their families get large, uh, sometimes some of these uh, young people uh, feel a need to rebel against things and try to seek out attention from their parents. And so what they would do to experience maybe a little bit of risk and then also uh, to get back at their parents for having a large family and forgetting about them, right? I think Rowan goes by the nick, he calls himself Lettuce because he's just kind of lost in the mix. And so what they do is throw themselves off of a tall building and uh, they go flat when they reach the ground, right? And then they get reassembled uh, back in the hospital, right? Repaired or more likely just put back together, rebuilt from scratch. So uh, while I was thinking about that, what is it about falling that does something to us? Uh, and uh, I need uh, a volunteer here. We're gonna do a trust fall. Sure, Aiden. Uh, you guys have done a, You guys have done a trust fall before, right? So I'm not going to have Aiden jump off of anything, but uh, so just close your eyes there and put your arms uh, across your chest, okay? And uh, I'm going to, on the count of three, I'll just say fall back, all right? So um, he's not going to fall far, right? But let's see, uh, one, two, three, fall. Oof. All right? So feels weird. It does, doesn't it? Even though you know you're going to get caught, uh, did you feel any sort of like, whoop, I hope he catches me, right? Uh, when we let ourselves face just a small amount of risk, just the, uh, the feeling that something could go wrong for us, we experience something that is uh, going to uh, change our physiology. And that's called adrenaline, right? Maybe a tiny, he got a tiny hit of adrenaline there, but adrenaline, what it does is a hormone, all right? So a hormone called epinephrine, and it's released from your adrenal gland, which is right by your kidneys. Uh, you have two adrenal glands. And um, it's a neurotransmitter, meaning that it's going to uh, change your body's uh, uh, different properties. Of it. The one thing uh, that we are going to experience is this fight or flight response, right? When you feel risk or scared, or tense or stressed, adrenaline is going to be released and that's going to give us this ability to face whatever fear that is, right? So maybe you've heard of folks being able to, like a, a, a mother of children, being able to lift a car, right? To be able to uh, save the lives of her children who might be in, at risk. Or maybe it uh, can cause a person to run very far, very fast, maybe even on an injured ankle to get away from an angry bear. Right? Adrenaline is that that is going to let us do sort of uh, 
uh, you can't really say superhuman feats of strength, but things that are a little bit abnormal for that person. All right? And the way that it does it is it's going to increase blood flow to your muscles. And as it does that, oxygen is going to be able to get to your muscles faster, giving you uh, more ability to, uh, to, to have more strength there. It's going to dilate your pupils. Okay? Sometimes you'll see uh, like an action sequence in a um, animated film or things where a person is just like has a moment uh, where to symbolize adrenaline coming through their body. They'll even show their eyeballs, right? And your, eye, your pupils will dilate. Uh, they have uh, increased uh, flow there. And then uh, even your, your nervous system is going to turn down its pain receptors so that you are uh, able to continue and do things that you might not normally be able to do. So adrenaline does all of this for us. Why might it be beneficial uh, to uh, cut down the pain receptors in your nervous system? <clears throat> Any ideas? When you're like doing crazy stuff and you need to, pain slows you down. Pain, yeah, pain inhibits your risk taking, right? If, uh, if I'm uh, trying to run and I've got maybe a, a somewhat of a pain in my in my leg, right? If you get cramped up at all, or maybe you uh, feel a little bit of soreness, you're going to back down, right? You're going to back it off a little bit. This is going to change that. So uh, that's going to help us out. Now, what we can do, there are some people who will seek out adrenaline, okay? Um, extreme sports, things where you are going to feel uh, stress, fear, excitement. That's going to um, have an impact on adrenaline, right? Even if it's something like getting ready to run a race or, or maybe jump out of a plane, as we'll see uh, later on, you might feel tingles in your stomach, right? Butterflies. That's, if you think about where uh, adrenaline is released from in your kidneys, it is going to uh, cause some of that uh, to happen, right? So you can feel some of those, um, some of those sensations, right? And so, Part of my thinking of why Tiger and the others would uh, do this in the book, they live in a place where there's really not a lot of risk, right? They're um, generally not going to, uh, they're not going to be hurt by things long term, and they uh, might feel a little bit, um, you know, soft because of that. And so seeking this out. Is, uh, is maybe a thing that they, uh, that they have to do to compensate for that. And of course, extreme sports, uh, you know, mountain biking, rock climbing, skydiving, uh, any of these things that, that where humans, even in our society, in our world, uh, will do those things to kind of seek out the, uh, the adrenaline there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about free fall. This is uh, what Taiga or Tiger experienced there. Um, this is where you have an acceleration towards Earth. And as you fall, all right, you're being pulled down by what force? Gravity. And we can actually quantify gravity. Gravity is just about 10 meters per second squared, which means that every second that you're falling, you're falling 10 meters per second faster. Okay, so after one second, I'm falling 10 meters per second. After another second of falling, now I'm falling 20 meters per second. So you're falling faster and faster. It's actually, and gravity is an acceleration. So quick question, how fast am I falling after four seconds? Roughly 40 meters per second. Um, and I say roughly because gravity isn't quite 10, it's 9.8. So it's a little bit less than 40, but you get the idea. 40 meters per second, guys, is very, 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 very fast. It's about 130 feet in a single second. So you are absolutely going nuts here. You're falling very fast. And let's do a, a quick reality check then. If you're falling that fast, guys, it's going to be painful. Um, so if you consider a car crash, uh, a person that is uh, traveling faster than 50 miles an hour, it's extremely likely that they could face, that they could, it could be fatal, right? At any speed, it's dangerous, but at speeds greater than 50 is, uh, is extremely dangerous. If we convert our speed of 40 meters per second, guys, you could get up to 120 miles per hour. Okay. So 
Uh, that's way more than 15 feet, all right? You had a question? Uh, yeah, how do I like write them down? Not necessarily, okay. no. So 50 miles an hour in a car. Guys, if you've ever fallen, I fell uh, uh, six feet last fall and I really hurt myself. I uh, bruised a rib and my ankle was all beat up uh, it was because I tripped while I was climbing down the ladder. Um, can you imagine, so falling six feet is painful. And if I'm speeding up faster and faster and faster, what prevents death for a skydiver? Yeah, parachute, of course. Parachute. So uh, a parachute is going to be uh, there to slow us down. Now, as we're falling, you're not going to increase speed infinitely. Eventually, you're going to get to a point where you are uh, going to be slowed down by air itself. Okay? And that's called air resistance. And so at some point, the air resistance is going to equal the force of gravity. So you're going to reach a point where you're no longer speeding up. You reach a maximum speed of about 120 miles per hour, all right? Uh, and that's, we call terminal velocity, okay? So a skydiver is able to reach terminal velocity, um, and uh, that's going to be uh, very, very fast, 120 miles per hour. I was talking to a coworker today, we were just, uh, uh, at lunch talking about skydiving and he did it and he said that the force on his face from the air pushing up made it hard for him to open his eyes at first and difficult for him to even breathe just because of the, the force pushing up and uh, so that terminal velocity will it at one point slow you turn make it so you're no longer falling faster there's some things uh, about that have you ever heard uh, that, or seen a squirrel fall out of a tree? Yes. Yeah. They're able to survive and walk away from that, right? You could throw a squirrel off the top of the tallest building and it would survive. It's because it's got such a slow terminal velocity that it's not ever going to speed up more than 23 miles per hour. So in a human, it could get up to 120. They have a surface area that's going to slow them down or make it so they're never going to go faster. Than 23. And so in a, a skydiving, your parachute is going to slow you down by 90%, making it so that when you do land, you're maybe going 20 or so miles per hour. And uh, coming in at an angle, you're able to you know, walk it off. So I um, wanted to show real quickly here. Yep, there he is. Uh, Mr. CM teaches physics. Uh, Mr. CM went. Uh, skydiving, I want to say two years ago for his 60th birthday. Uh, some other teachers have gone skydiving as well. I believe Mr. Budniak has gone skydiving. If you had him, uh, ask him about it. But Mr. CM gave us some uh, uh, a video I'm going to share real quick. First, I'm going to come up to you. And Joseph. Oh, yeah. How's it going, bud? Good. How you doing? Here's the slide down. just falling with his body like this. He had a special suit. Uh, what kind of suit? Have you heard it? A wingsuit or a squirrel suit. And so what he's done is increased his surface area so he can control his falling. And uh, you'll notice uh, they can change the, uh, their position of their body to speed up or slow down how fast they're falling. Um, so I just want to end up by saying, uh, you know, adrenaline 
or what uh, they were looking for uh, in fall. <laughs> there we go. Uh, is a very fun feeling. Uh, there are many safe ways to go about it. Uh, and um, so taking mitigated risk or uh, trying out some sports like uh, maybe uh, going to climb Nulu and doing some bouldering or uh, joining the Outdoors Club. We do a couple of things where you're maybe pushing the limits, uh, doing some kayaking or hopefully some spelunking this fall can be a great opportunity to kind of experience some of that adrenaline rush in a safe way, not quite like, like the guys in the book. So do you guys have any questions for me? All right, well, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, what's up? Um, so, if you're traveling at 120 miles per hour without any airbags or structures to, to help you, I would say it's very, 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 very unlikely. However, there have been people whose parachutes have maybe malfunctioned and have been able to walk away. Uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know those cases uh, well enough to say whether they splatted on the ground or maybe they were slowed down by a tree or something like that. Granted there's still tons of risk, uh, right, with, with that. Um, fell into like mud from so high up. Like so falling head. into mud? Yeah. Yeah. Her legs were all broken and she had to get into like less than knees. I believe it. Um, the, the, the force that you feel is when you slow down, how long it takes to come to a stop. And so if there's something there that can give you a little extra time in coming to a stop, in other words, like a cushion, that can sometimes make it so that the force that you feel your uh, momentum uh, impulse is a lot less. So sometimes that can make it so it's not as dangerous. That's what airbags are for, right? They're, they're gonna slow down your uh, your change in momentum. Yeah? At one point in the would be like from like standing straight up or is it like laying like a skydiver? Laying like a skydiver. So laying like this is 120. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was a guy who jumped uh, from the stratosphere his name was Felix Baumgartner. Uh, he jumped, he was like sponsored by Red Bull and he went straight up and down. And I wanna say he got up to, um, he broke the sound barrier. Broke the sound barrier. So I, I, I don't know what number it was that he got to specifically, but um, that was upwards of, I wanna say, gosh, I gotta look at How fast, uh, anyway, it was much faster than 120. Uh, so he's the fastest human who's ever traveled and it is falling, but like this, right? Yeah. So yeah, he cut down his, uh, his surface area that was facing the air, so his air resistance was less, so he was able to go faster. You have to jump from a minimum 13,500 feet to get up to full terminal velocity. Um, however, uh, you don't need to go that high to fall at a rate that could be fatal, of course. As low as six feet could, depending on how you land, could do some, that's, that's this high. <laughs> so that damage could be enough to mess you up pretty bad. But 13,500, uh, you could change that depending, so uh, he was able to go faster because uh, the air is thinner in the stratosphere, right? And so because the, uh, the density of the air was less, there was less air pushing back on him, so he could go faster. Those are good questions. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Thank you. Oh, and then I guess see what happens from six feet. Yeah, he's still fine. This is a tough play. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he's gone. So. so. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.